Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah. This is Jar of Fireflies and here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of three. And today we're doing our final part of this series of answering your questions. Okay, folks, so we just got back from a really long nature walk, so my kids are a little bit tired, but they are in the kitchen and they are painting in their nature journals, having the time of their lives with some of the things that they have collected while we were out on our walk. So I'm gonna take advantage of this time to myself to answer the rest of these questions that I have here, at least as many as we can get to in however much time my kids give me. So that is what is happening today. Let's dive right in. Okay. First, what is something that you have learned about another religion on YouTube you found surprising or interesting? So there is a Mennonite vlogger that I enjoy watching, Megan Fox Unlocked. She's super sweet. And I learned so much about Mennonite culture from her. And it was, I always thought Mennonites were not like she is. Like I didn't realize that's what a Mennonite was. I had this totally other view of what they were. So I think it was really neat that her channel just really opened my eyes to like what it was to be a Mennonite. It's, it, I understand that being a Mennonite can be kind of diverse in the way that like being a Jew, there's different kinds of Jews, there's different kinds of Mennonites, but it's really interesting and it's been interesting to watch her channel and just learn a lot about her religion and culture. So that was pretty fun for me. All right, next question. How are you able to get beyond the Christian belief in the divinity of Jesus? So that was just, never really a thing with me. I didn't really have that belief even growing up as a child. I didn't understand it. I remember like being a kid and asking my parents like, why don't we just talk to God? You know? <laughs> so I didn't really understand it. I didn't feel like that's what the Bible was trying to say. I felt like something sort of missed the mark in there. So for me, it wasn't like it was something that I believed and then changed my belief so much as that I don't think I just ever bought into it fully anyways. All right, next question has to do with the Arab. What kinds of areas, what kind of area does it cover? So I've done another video about the Arab and I'll link to that in the description box below for you guys where I talked in a little bit more detail about what an Arab is. But just in a nutshell version, uh, if we live in a community that has an Arab and that's kind of like a border to our community, like an actual physical border that allows us to carry things on Shabbat that if we did not have the Arab, we would not be able to do like a house key, for example. So. What kinds of area does it cover? So generally like the synagogue is in the middle and it kind of goes around wherever, like just around the neighborhood really. But it also kind of depends on like how the neighborhood is set up and like what's around so that they can construct the Arab that way. So it, everyone is a little bit different. What would happen if it broke on or during Shabbat? So basically we go and we check it before Shabbat each week somebody in the community will go and check it. I think it's our rabbi in our community, but yeah, somebody will go and check it and make sure that it's up and functional. And if it's not, they let us know so that we know to plan accordingly for Shabbat that week. If it breaks on Shabbat, I don't know that we would necessarily know that because we're not like checking it on Shabbat. We're checking it before, like right before Shabbat. So I guess we're just kind of trusting that it's going to stay up. <laughs> If it was going to break on Shabbat, I think that would be because there was like a really bad storm and there was a really bad storm. We're not leaving the house anyways. Okay, next question. Do you feel like you're missing out as an Orthodox Jew by not visiting Israel? I don't know if missing out is the right term. I mean, I would love to visit Israel. I think it would be an amazing experience, but it's not, I mean, right now it's just not something that's possible in my life. So, and up until this point, it has just not been something that is possible in my life due to finances, due to uh, travel restrictions with COVID, due to family obligations, uh, whatever it is. Like there's just different things that seems that there's always something preventing me from going there. So I guess I don't feel like I'm missing out because if I was supposed to go there, I would have made it already. All right, next question. When are you coming to Australia so we can meet up for a hot chocolate? Oh my gosh, I wish. That would be so much fun. I think it would be neat to do a meetup sometime with subscribers. I think that would be super cool. Maybe next time I'm up in New Jersey or something like that, we'll have to do like a coffee shop meetup or something. I don't know. I think that would be fun. If you guys would do a meetup, let me know. <laughs> okay, next question. Do Jews sit Shiva if a couple suffers a miscarriage? No, we do not. Next question. I noticed in some of your stories that the rabbi's wife plays an important role in the community. Are rabbis always married? 
If not, does someone else take that role? Do they have to follow any training? Okay, so lots to unpack here. Yes, the rabbi's wife does generally take on a role in the community. She is a great resource as a mentor for women in the community. She often will teach classes for the community. Not always, it's not always. Rebbitzin is the title for a rabbi's wife. Every Rebbitzin that I know has had a job outside of being the rabbi's wife. They're not getting paid the way a rabbi gets paid to be a rabbi. The Rebbitzin does not get a paycheck for being the Rebbitzin. That said, it's kind of understood when someone hires a rabbi that his wife will also be participating. So I guess the money is like the salary is supposed to encompass them both to a certain point. But generally the rabbi's wives that I know, they all have a separate job also that they will get a paycheck for. Are the rabbis always married? Most of the time. Not always though. I, I have known at least one community rabbi who was not married. It's not super common, but it does happen. So if they're not married, does somebody else take that role? No, not really. Not in my experience in that one circumstance that I know of. So yeah. And do they have to follow any training? No, there's not training specifically to be a rabbi's wife. Okay, next question, why do I homeschool? I have talked about this before, but this question came up over and over and over again. So I wanted to go ahead and address it. I homeschool, just in a super nutshell here, <laughs> I homeschool because I know that I can give my kids the best and most complete education here at home. I can follow their interests. I can stay on pace with them where they're at. For example, my daughter excels at math. She's way ahead of like where she quote unquote should be in math, but she struggles a lot more with reading. She is quote unquote behind where she should be in reading. She's six, it's not a big deal. But I can keep her on target and do this advanced math with her while I work really hard on her reading with her. So it's it all evens out in the end. And I'm able to just really cater the education to my children, as well as give them these amazing experiences that would not be possible if they were in school. For example, taking off and going backpacking during the week or that nature walk we did this afternoon. We took off for like over an hour and did a nature walk around the neighborhood. And they came home with all these cool nature finds, pine cones and burr acorns and all kinds of neat things and they're in there painting them in their nature journals and writing about them. That's amazing. They wouldn't be doing that if they were sitting in a classroom all day. So yeah, that's kind of the super nutshell version, I guess, why I homeschool. Next question. Are there any restrictions, content, language, subject on books or other media that you engage with? So I assume that this question is addressed at me personally and not at my children. So for me, no, I'll read or watch anything, but I have preferences, of course. <laughs> like I said about the music in my last video, if you know the words that I hear are the words that will come out of my mouth. So I am careful about the language that are in shows that I watch, as well as the topics, because I don't wanna have certain images in my head. Like I don't like horror movies. I don't like just really graphic movies or I don't like shows that are really raunchy. That's just really not my style. Y'all know I like to read my cozy mysteries. So I also like to watch that similar kind of television show like Rosemary and Time is a favorite of mine. So I don't have anything like Jewishly that restricts me from anything, but I am just careful personally what I engage in as far as media goes. All right, next question. What are some books that you would recommend for someone who is interested in exploring Judaism? Okay, I get asked this question all the time and I had to outsource this and ask advice from someone that I respect uh, because I, I did not know the answer. I don't know what books to recommend to somebody. So these were the two books that were suggested to me. And I will link to both of these in the description box below. The first one is a book called On Judaism and it is by Rabbi Emmanuel Feldman. And the next one is called The Bible for the Clueless but Curious by Nachman Braverman. So I will link to both of those in, in the description box below and I hope that that is helpful to you. Okay, next question. Was there any halakha, that is Jewish law, any Jewish law that you had trouble implementing? What are some things that helped you remember and or implement it? So the hardest for me was turning on and off lights on Shabbat because it's just such a natural reaction for me to switch a light off every time I walk out of a room. It's just like, it's just natural. It's what I do. So I got those handy dandy light switch covers that I've shown y'all in some other videos. And I put those over our light switches so that then I'm not accidentally, when I, if I go and smack that light switch, I'm just hitting the light switch cover and I'm not turning off any light. So that has been really helpful for me. Okay, next question. Were there any myths or misconceptions that you believed about Judaism before you began your conversion journey? Yes, 
I didn't know that you could convert. I thought you had to be born into Judaism and conversion was not an option. So as soon as I discovered that conversion was an option, I immediately sought out a conversion of my own. But that was a misconception. You definitely can convert. Jews do not seek out converts. We don't uh, proselytize or you don't have like missionaries or anything going out trying to convert people. But yes, converts are totally accepted uh, after a whole process, which if y'all have seen my conversion videos, then you know. Okay, next question. Do I have a favorite craft? Oh gosh, that is hard. <laughs> I love all of them, y'all know this. I would have to say an absolute favorite would be quilting. Like if I was picking a craft retreat to go away to and just spend a weekend doing nothing but crafty things or whatever, I would totally choose like a quilting one. That would be amazing. All right, next question. Is it harder to be kosher or gluten-free? That's amazing. I love that question. Gluten-free for sure. I had to relearn how to cook things and bake things. There's still food items that I just can't even deal with with the gluten-free. It's, it's really changed everything in a way that keeping kosher did not. Keeping kosher was much easier to adapt to as far as still making meals that I enjoy, but the gluten-free was much, much more difficult and I still struggle with that. So, but we're, we're getting there and it's for a good reason. We got to keep my kids safe. So it's all good. Okay. Next question. How are your husband and you doing after the loss of your baby? Okay. So y'all know I did a video a few months back. I don't know how many months back now at this point, but we uh, had a miscarriage on Yom Kippur this past year. That was very, very sad. But as y'all know from my last video, we are expecting a baby again. So that is fantastic and wonderful news. And that definitely makes things a bit easier. So we still miss that baby, but it's, you know, it's one of those things when you lose a baby and then you get your rainbow baby with, you know, within a sh nine months of time or so, you wouldn't have that baby without losing the other one. So it's kind of like a weird thing, you know? My oldest is also a rainbow baby. And, you know, if I had had that first baby, I wouldn't have my oldest. It's just one of those weird things. So, um, yes, we are doing much better. A lot of time has passed and that makes it easier with the pain. We still obviously miss that child, but this is how things are meant to be. And we have another baby coming. So that is super exciting. Okay, next question. Uh, this one has to do with like my day in the life vlogs. So it says, when you come into your kitchen, I notice that you are all put together, washed, dressed, hair, makeup. First thing you wash your hands, then tea and prayers. Is that the proper order or is it because you're filming, you have to change it up a bit? Okay, so what you see in my videos is the order that I do everything in. I don't change my life for the videos. I will say I'm not wearing makeup in those videos. <laughs> Maybe once in a while I have makeup on, but not that early in the morning. Uh, then uh, the other thing I want to say, but, but yes, I do get up and get dressed and stuff before I come out because I do want to be fully dressed before I come out and pray. I want to be put together before I start my prayers in the morning. And I do some of my prayers, like I fix my tea and get all that ready. And then I come out in here to this room. Just, that's just a personal preference for me. I come in here and then I start saying my prayers. I get through a certain prayer, a certain amount of prayers before I start drinking my tea or having my breakfast. And then after that, I actually usually shut the camera off for this, but then I'll go back and finish the rest of my morning prayers. So that is the order that I do things in. In an ideal world, I would have washed my hands in the bedroom before I even got out of my bed. That is just not something that I do. I wash my hands when I come out to the kitchen, so, but that would be, I guess, the more proper way to do things. And again, in an ideal world, I would have finished all of my morning prayers before I started to eat. However, I really need my breakfast in the morning, so that doesn't work super well for me. The next question, how often do you meet your mother or with other close relatives? On a regular basis, I'm gonna hang out with my mom next week. Actually, the day this video is going out, I'm hanging out with my mom. I was hanging out with my dad a couple of days ago. So uh, yeah, and it just, it just depends. COVID has really thrown things for a loop as far as us being able to get together. We used to always get together once a week, the whole big extended family, you know, my brothers, my sisters, all the nieces, nephews, my, my parents, everybody would all get together. Once COVID hit, like that changed. So we are seeing each other less now, but it's due to COVID, not due to anything else. Okay, next question. I am wondering, how do you motivate yourself? 
how do I motivate myself? I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of a motivated person. <laughs> I don't know. I guess motivated in like what I feel like would be, I guess I need more clarity on that. I'm very motivated in my Judaism because I want to do things right. I'm very motivated like as a wife because I love my husband and I want our relationship to be good. I'm very motivated with my kids because I love them and I want them to have the best life that they can. I'm motivated to keep my house clean because I like to live in a clean house. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I need more, I need more direction on that question. Part two of that question. Also, how do you stay so positive and upbeat? Again, I think this is just that I'm naturally kind of a positive and upbeat person. I like to think of myself as more of a realist, but I probably am a little bit more of an optimist. So I don't know, but positive and upbeat. I'm not always positive and upbeat, especially these past few months. I've been like so sick most of the time, but I try to stay positive and upbeat for sure. Just because I know that that's better for me personally. It's better for the people around me. It's better for like my home. So yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I just do. Again, I try to make sure I have that time for myself and I'm taking care of myself. And that allows me to be more positive and upbeat for sure. Next question. When are you coming home to have a cup of tea or hot chocolate with me in Yerushalayim in Jerusalem? <laughs> okay, so apparently I'm invited for hot chocolate all over the world. This is fantastic. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's so crazy right now. I don't fly when I'm pregnant, so I'm definitely not flying until after this baby comes. And hopefully by then these travel restrictions will kind of die down a little bit because right now it's been so hard to even think about planning a trip. All the people that I know who have been going to Israel lately, they've always been like, do we pack our bags? Do we not pack our bags? Because they don't ever know when there's going to be more restrictions and all of a sudden they're going to have to cancel their flights. It's like, I just don't even want to deal with that stress. So... <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know when I will get to Israel. One day, one day, with God's help. Okay, next question. Are there crafts you cannot do? No, I can do any crafts. I mean, I assume you're, I might be answering that question wrong. As far as like Jewish law, I can do any craft. Do I personally do every craft? No, um, I don't crochet. That's one. I, I used, I tried crochet. It just never quite clicked with me beyond like the very basic stitch and making a scarf. So it's just not something I do anymore. But like as far as Jewish law, I can do any craft. Okay. Um, are there any rules concerning crafting during the holidays? Yes, I cannot do crafting during our holidays. The ones that are Yom Tov, which are the ones that are like Shabbat and that we don't uh, drive our cars talk on our phones, things like that. So on those days, I cannot do things like knitting, crafting, sewing. However, on other holidays like Hanukkah, I can still do any crafting throughout Hanukkah. On holidays like Passover, where it's like a long holiday, but there's, you know, the, the days at the beginning and the end that are like Shabbat. And then there's the middle days, which are not, but there's still holidays. And I still personally don't craft on those days. It's better to not. Okay, so the next question on here is, do you do a vision board for the Jewish New Year as well as this one? No, I don't do a vision board for the Jewish New Year. It would be great if I did one at that point of the year. I know some ladies get together and will do a vision board at that point in the year. I personally just do not have the time around the high holidays when our New Year is. Okay, next question. If your kids decide to choose another religion or not be a religious Jew, how would you feel? So again, I have talked about this before in a previous video, but again, this question came up over and over and over again. So I will just very briefly answer it here. I will always love my children, no matter what path they choose in life. They're my children and I adore them. If they chose to do something other than what I chose, I imagine that that would hurt. Hopefully that won't be an issue but you just never know. But I will always love them and I hope to always have a very good relationship with them no matter what. Next question. Were any of your siblings or relatives influenced by you to convert to Judaism since they see all of the time what a wonderful and meaningful life you have since you converted? No, my family is happily being what they are. Next question. How did your in-laws feel that you weren't Moroccan? A lot of these Jews are very insular and don't like their children marrying outside of their community. Their children don't usually marry Ashkenazi Jews. Okay, first of all, I was never an Ashkenazi Jew. I, that is not my lineage or heritage. I was not Jewish, I converted. My lineage does not go to any Ashkenazi Jewish country. Like it's, I'm not Ashkenazi, never was. Uh, as far as Jews being very uh, insular, 
like these Jews, I assume you mean Moroccan Jews. I have not found that to be the case. Most of the Moroccan Jews that I know did not marry other Moroccans. They may have married other Sephardi Jews, but they didn't marry other Moroccan Jews necessarily. But in general, my husband's family was absolutely thrilled. They absolutely love me and they think that I'm fantastic. And I think that that's wonderful too. I really adore them as well. They're really amazing. All right, next question. Did you legally change your first name? Nope. Next question. What is the definition of no work on Shabbat? Okay. So the definition of no work on Shabbat goes back to uh, 39 types of work, the 39 malachot that were done in the building of the tabernacle in the desert. So that's where we get our definition of what work is. And, and that's things like that we cannot weave, we cannot do creative work, we cannot uh, start a fire, put out a fire. That's where our definition of work comes from. It's not the definition of work that we have today. So the next part of that question, what about feeding pets or farm animals? That's totally permitted. We actually must take care of our pets or farm animals before we take care of ourselves. Uh, the next part of that same question, what about taking care of someone who is ill? Yes, we absolutely can take care of sick or ill people to the point where we can break Shabbat uh, and drive in our car to the hospital if somebody is sick or ill and needs to go to a doctor or a hospital or something like that. It's actually forbidden to not to do that. Like we must at that point take somebody to the hospital if that is what is needed. Uh, the next, can you do hobbies, sewing, embroidery, woodworking, etc. during Shabbat? No, we cannot. Okay. Next, we are trucking through you guys. This is great. Next question. What is the best advice you can give to a new convert as she makes her way into the Jewish community? My, co my cousin converted right before Rosh Hashanah. Just make sure you've got that mentor. That's always going to be my advice to everybody, no matter who you are in life, like get a mentor. <laughs> so get that mentor, someone who's ahead of you in life, whose life you admire, who you would be happy if your life looked like that in 10 years and start a relationship with them so that you have somebody to go to for advice and things like that. And then just to make as many friends as you can, just get to know people, get to know people in the community and, and that sort of thing. Okay, been out to check on my kids several times now. They're getting a little bit loud and rowdy, but they're still doing okay. But I'm gonna have to wrap this up quickly enough. All right, next question. Am I able to get a haircut? If so, how does that work? Yes, I am totally able to cut my hair. I personally cut my own hair. I don't really care much what it looks like under here. So I just cut my own hair. If I wanted to go get it cut, I would either go to a stylist who works out of their home so it can be private or I would go to a salon that has a private room. Those are available. So yeah, that's what I would do. Next question. If any of your children ever expressed the desire to attend public school, would that be something you would consider? Absolutely. If public school was the best option for my children, that's where they would go. Right now, that is not the best option for my children. So, but we all, I always say we will homeschool as long as it is what is best for our family. So that is what we are doing. But my kids have absolutely no desire to go to public school. Next question. Also, what non-kosher foods do you miss most? I don't miss any particular foods. Uh, I, I miss being able to, the convenience of just being able to grab food at like a drive-thru or that kind of takeout at a grocery store, that kind of thing. That's, that's what I miss. I miss the convenience of being able to just eat anything in a store. Okay, next question. Are you allowed to cross off items on a to-do list on Shabbat? No, I am not. Next question. How far is your church from your subdivision? Sometime you say you walk. Okay, first of all, I do not go to church. I go to a synagogue. Churches are for Christians. Jews go to synagogues. I also call it shul sometime or Beit Knesset, which is the Yiddish and Hebrew words. So yes, it is in my neighborhood. It is not terribly far. We all, all the people in my community, we live here in this neighborhood so that we can all walk to shul on Shabbat, to Beit Knesset on Shabbat, because we are not permitted to drive. So we all have to live within walking distance if we want to be able to attend services. All right, next question. Will you and your family consider to make Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael in the future? Okay, so would my family and I consider moving to Israel in the future? Yes, but not right now. <laughs> not right now. We're very happy where we are. We absolutely love being here in Texas. We have a great community and we're very happy here right now. We've almost moved there before. We actually started the Aliyah process, the process of moving to Israel about six years ago or so, but we ended up not going in the end. We stayed here and we're very happy that we did.
Next question. What is your best piece of parenting advice or method? Oh gosh. I'm definitely not a parenting expert. <laughs> I think parenting advice. I don't know, just love your kids. Love spending time with your kids. Get to know your kids. Have conversations with your kids. If there was like one tiny bit of advice, I, I've heard this before and I think it's just really beautiful. Like make sure your face lights up when your kids walk into the room. And I, I, so no matter what I'm doing, no matter what kind of mood I'm in, if it's like in the 6 a.m. in the morning and I'm out here having some quiet time and one of my kids just walks out, wakes up and I'm like, inside I'm like, oh, my quiet time. But on the outside I'm like, oh, I am so happy to see you come and sit with me, you know? Like just make them feel like they are the most important and wonderful and amazing thing in your life and that you're always so excited to spend time with them. So that that's, that's my advice. Again, not a parenting expert by any stretch. Okay, does your family ever eat out or to carry out or is that too difficult to be sure the food would be kosher and gluten-free? It generally is too difficult, so we generally don't. The thing we like to do is get takeout sushi uh, because that we totally trust can be gluten-free and it's super easy and everybody loves it. Probably like once a year we get pizza. So there are definitely restaurants that we can go to to get kosher and gluten-free food. There's usually something gluten-free on the menu, but we don't really enjoy going out to eat that much. We like to cook at home. We like our food at home and going out to eat is just kind of a hassle and it's super expensive and we don't love it. So we don't go out to eat very often. Oh, this kind of goes along with the question from earlier. Do you watch mainstream TV movies that are rated R? I guess. I don't tend to watch personally a lot of movies but I have seen rated R movies. I just can't remember the last time I've really watched a rated R movie because I haven't watched a movie in so long that wasn't a kid's movie. <laughs> so personally, I guess I should say no, but it's not that I'm opposed to it. It's just not something that comes up really in my life because I don't enjoy watching movies that much. Okay, next question. What kind of music do you like? I feel like we answered this. I like a lot of instrumental music. Um, I love classical music and I love French pop and I love kind of just like chill music. I don't know, I can't think of like an artist right now to, to say, but sort of like, just like relaxing. There was this like Thanksgiving station on Pandora that I've really enjoyed. It was supposed, I guess it was supposed to be like music to play in the background on Thanksgiving while you have people over. I don't know, but I enjoyed that music. What kind of music do you and the kids listen to? We typically listen to classical music because we do composer studies. So we're usually listening to whatever composer that we are studying at that time. And does your husband have a favorite musical genre? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know that he listened to a lot of uh, like Moroccan music and things like that, but I don't know that that's necessarily like his favorite, but I am planning to do a Q and A with him and you're welcome to ask him in that one. Okay. Next question, how do we make time to say Birkat Hamazon after every meal? So Birkat Hamazon is the blessing after you eat a meal that contains bread. And it's a very, very long blessing. Like it's pages and pages. So for us, because we're gluten-free, that only occurs for us on Shabbat. That's the only time we're eating bread that we're going to say Birkat Hamazon for that blessing after bread. So during the week for us, it's a non-issue because all the sandwiches, bagels, things like that that we're eating, they're all gluten-free. They don't contain wheat, they don't contain oats or any of the grains that would fall under that category to need that long after blessing. So it's a much shorter one. So that's kind of a non-issue for us. And then on Shabbat, when we are eating bread that needs that blessing after, it's just part of our meal and that's just what it is. And if we were eating bread during the week, it would just be understood if I'm gonna eat the bread, I need to set aside five, 10 minutes afterwards to say this blessing and that's just the way that it is. That's for us. But again, I'm one to talk because we usually don't eat bread. Okay, final question. I was wondering if you could celebrate New Year's when it fell on Shabbat. We did not celebrate New Year's when it fell on Shabbat. We just kind of glossed over that because we were celebrating Shabbat. But we could have, I suppose, in the sense that we could have just like stayed up till midnight and said, yay. <laughs> but we would, I, I'm not so into that personally. So it's not such a big deal for me or anybody else in our family. The kids would really like to have a New Year's party, but uh, they don't stay up till midnight usually. So I don't see that happening any year soon. <laughs> Okay, that is all the questions that I have for now. I've got to cut it off and get back out to my kids now and help them clean up after their painting. 
Thank you all so much for watching and thank you for contributing so many amazing questions. I thought these were the best questions y'all have ever given me this, this series. They were so much fun to answer and I hope that you guys enjoyed listening to them also. All right, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I would super appreciate it. It helps my channel out a lot and make sure that you have subscribed and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I would love to see you here again. All right, I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your day and I will see you in my next upload. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Okay. The next question. How often do you meet with your with how often? Ugh.